Well, hello, good people. Milton Chup here with the third in the series of GMAX for the beginning modeler. In the first two videos, we introduced the series and why we wanted to do it, basically to help the beginning modeler who is struggling get, getting their heads around GMAX. Um, to give you a simple, straightforward, meat and potatoes only instructions for getting started in GMAX uh, from start to finish to creating an aircraft and exporting it to flight sim. We also in the first video talked about settings necessary or settings that are required to give you a good uh, experience in using GMAX. In the second video we basically explained the things that we'll use on the menu bar, on the toolbar, uh, and introduce the command panel, the viewports, and spent most of the time talking about viewport uh, management or viewport viewing tools, which are these eight in the bottom right. With that said, this video is going to focus on creating, <clears throat> well, using the command panel to create objects. And there's <clears throat> a number of different command panels and essentially they are create what is this modify hierarchy motion display and utilities today we're going to focus on primarily on create and we're going to focus on standard primitives which are boxes spheres cylinders Tauruses, planes, and these others, which we will not use throughout the series. The second group, which are basically the DNA of geometry, includes splines for lines, circles, arcs, ingons, etc. We will talk about in the next video lines, circles, and arcs, how to use them, how to get from, from that basic splines into uh, and build that up to a standard primitive. We usually use these in more complex shapes and situations, so uh, it's going to take some time to get through that. We're going to have to do it in the next video. For now, our focus is going to be introducing you to creating these objects here, and how to do that and, and manage those objects, and how to get them set up ready to ready to go. Pretty simple th stuff, but you know, once you get through it, of course, and uh, we're, we're going to do that right now. So let's uh, select the viewport and open it up, which is, I like to work in one viewport, not in four. I like to get up close and personal. To create basic geometry, or what GMAX calls standard primitives, one of these guys right here, it's a pretty simple procedure. You select the geometry you want to build. We're going to build a box. You'll notice down here there are parameters, length, width, and height parameters. And there's two ways to do this. You can just start with here and then refine the parameters, or you can use the keyboard method and do it that way. I usually just come in, create my box, and do that, and then come over and change the parameters. So let's just um, undo that. I want to change up these viewports and I'll show you how to do that. Um, <clears throat> when, you, when you're in the, this opening screen, whatever viewport you have open, when you go to customize and down to viewport configuration, whenever you change the way you want to render in smooth or highlights or lit wireframes or whatever it is, you also need to think about what viewports usually I think active viewport is only is uh, the only thing that's affected in this case uh, for this video and yeah we're going to say all viewports so that whenever I create anything it's going to show up the same way if I switch from one viewport to the other uh, so it I'm not spending a lot of time jumping around so let's create that box now watch this length width and height as I create this box and you do this with the mouse just click on uh, left click and drag down to create length, drag to the right to create width, let off the mouse button and just push the mouse or pull the mouse, either one, to create height. All right, And then you can uh, click again off the object and come over and change your length, width, and height parameters. 
So let's create a two by two by two uh, box and then press enter and let's zoom in on that. You can do that with this button or with the E key, either one, E key or this button. And just take a look at that box and say, yep, there's a box. We did it. Cool. Let's go to top view by pressing the T key and the E key to zoom in. And I'm going to scroll with the mouse off of that and find the center of the GMAX universe. Now, notice I created this off center, which is fine. Usually, when you create an object, you want to set the pivot by clicking the hierarchy button and affect pivot only. I don't want to move the box right now, I just want to affect this pivot on the box. It's part of the box uh, geometry, it's part of the box universe, not universe, I think they call it world, whatever. It's part of the object world, not the GMAX world, but the object world. So center that to object and align it to world. All right. So anytime you create an object, do that. And it may be a good idea while you're right here to go ahead and reset scale, just in case you also, in, in the process, scaled the object larger or smaller. If you reset scale, you know you're you're good to go. Now that we have that operation done, we got the pivot in the middle of the object we just created. We want to center it to the GMAX universe. The only way you can move things here is to go up and hit the uh, get off the select and do no damage to the select and move uh, tool. And now we can come down here and type in coordinates. If I want it at the center of the GMAX universe, that would be zero, zero, zero. So now we've got the box at the center of the GMAX universe. It's a two by two meter box, two by two by two. We've set, reset the pivot, we've reset the scale, and lined it to world and, and uh, moved it to the center of the GMAX universe. So that object is done. Now if we want to move it away, we'll do the select and move tool and grab the X axis uh, pivot and slide it over out of the way so we can create another object. Okay. So we'll deselect that. We'll go back to the top. Scroll out a little bit. I'm using the scroll button to move in and out like this. You can also use the mouse down here using the zoom button. Alright, let's create another object just for the fun of it. Let's create a cylinder. Same thing down here. You've got a radius for the cylinder. Not diameter, but radius. And you got a height. You've got uh, height segments, which is how many cross sections you want in that cylinder. Cap segments and how many sides, how smooth do you want the outside of that cylinder to be. We're showing 18 here. And I'll show you the impact of that. So let's create this and watch the radius. We're going to do a, say, a 2 by 2 uh, meter radius. So uh, this is diameter. Went two meter diameter, so it's going to be a one meter radius, roughly. And then I let off the mouse button and push or pull. And create a one. Let's make it two, since this is not going to be okay, roughly two. Okay. Once that's done, that's done. You can come over here and just key in the exact parameters. And there we have a one by one, one, one meter diameter, and a one meter height. Now, let's take a look at that. Press the E key to zoom in. Let's change this to edge faces. Notice all the polys in there. If you're going to have an object that's essentially straight like this, straight geometry, there's no need to have all these polys. you got five, five times more polys here or four times more polys than you need. So let's eliminate those height segments. I'm putting a one there. Good deal. Now, sometimes you want 18 sides, sometimes you only want 6 if you're building a bolt head, right? Uh, if you're uh, building a fuselage using the cylinder as your construct, then you might want 24 sides. It gives you a nice smooth cylinder. Now, if you're building for CFS-3 or you're building AI aircraft, you don't want it that high. You might only want you know, 12, which would be fine for AI, even a 10. Uh, for the 100 LOD. So just some things to play with there. Okay, so that's that. So now that we've created it, let's affect pivot only, center the object, line the world, 
and reset scale. So all those things are done. We know that that guy is good to go. Let's move it out of the way here. Well, let's tell you what. While we're right here, we'll go ahead and center it first. Now we can move it out of the way now that we know it's right on the line. All right, let's go create a sphere. Spheres are just nice big round worlds, if you will. And we're working with radius again here, so make it about one. And come over here and key in a one. So we got a perfect one meter radius here. And notice all the polys in this bad boy. There's a lot of polys. And that can be a killer if you have much of that going around. So uh, the way you change that is change the number of segments. Uh, usually I use somewhere between 12 and 16. If I'm putting this in the virtual cockpit, that looks a little rough. So maybe we'll go to 16. You might be able to get away with that. And depending on how you're using this, you know, you might... Uh, might uh, end up cutting off half of it so you eliminate half of those polys or polys that you can't see and you're only going to use the top of the shape or who knows the side of the shape you could use it this way to create a canopy and stretch this thing out I'll show you more about that down the road alright so now that we got that created we'll Effect pivot only, centered object, line the world, and reset scale. Boom, boom, boom. <clears throat> scale shouldn't be off unless you uh, uh, accidentally or, or on purpose scaled the object. Okay, let's uh, get off of that and create a plane. Planer. Notice the same thing. We'll pull down for length, go across for width. And come over, and if you want to make this uh, six by four, oh, a little big, isn't it? Let's bring it down to four by two. How about that. And then you see these segments in here. Uh, if you have no need for all those segments, and just change these to ones. So you got one poly here representing that planer. So if you right-click off of that, then uh, that finishes that operation. And if, if you want to, you can go ahead and do this very good then there's a planer that's basically uh, yeah it could be used for creating mesh for an airfield whatever if you're building scenery I usually use them to uh, map a texture on uh, if I'm modeling a particular part you know, it's a good handy way to create uh, one poly map a texture on and then build something against it so that's that I guess we have time here. Let's see. Yeah, we got time. We can create or try to create. <laughs> this thing always gives me a heartburn when I try to do a torus. Torus is like a donut shape. So you're creating two radiuses here. And sometimes it gets a little weird. Notice. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Now let's. Radius one is the radius of the. Uh, outer part of the donut I think see what that does and radius 2 I think is the radius of the hole so let's see what happens there yeah no that's radius radius 1 is the hole size right radius 2 is the outer donut size so let's play with that a little bit alright and where do we use this you can use it to build tires you can use it to build uh, your control column uh, on your uh, your steering wheel and your control column so things like that you know these can get pretty heavy but like for a tire what you usually do is cut out these center polys here and then you you can uh, vary these uh, segments of course to get you know, a different look to it uh, the uh, smoothness of the tire you don't want that kind of tire in flight sim typically I mean that might work for a low poly version but for a high poly version you want segments uh, more like 24 <coughs> so um, you know you could use that to build tires and uh, simple ways to add the wheel inside and we'll show you that when we go building uh, building gear all right so that's a little bit about what that's all about uh, while we're right here 
click off of that with a right click and then we'll go pivot only center line and scale boom boom there you go standard uh, primitive geometry standard primitives uh, this is how we get started usually uh, with building stuff so these are your some of your basic tools uh, basic constructs from which you will modify and shape and use to uh, for other reasons too cutting tools and what have you so a lot of things you can do with this and a lot of ways it can go uh, and we'll get into more of that when we uh, get started here so what I'd like you to do uh, before you watch the next video is just spend some time creating these objects and uh, playing with the parameters getting comfortable with what's here uh, hit the G key and get rid of that grid <coughs> and uh, do what you want to get comfortable with playing with the parameters and creating these these objects and uh, once you're comfortable with that come back for the next video which we'll talk about uh, splines the DNA of all these objects so and they really help you create more complex shapes and uh, and then put some skin on them and you end up you know with some something very complex done relatively simply so looking forward to seeing you back here I hope this video has been helpful comment down below if you will and uh, uh, I'll look for you on the next video have a good day